In this presentation, we will add bank service charges to our books using the bank feed feature within QuickBooks Online. Here we are in Get Great Guitars test file. We're going to go through the standard process down here. We're going to start with the reports. We're going to take a look at the balance sheet report, the income statement report, and then we'll go into our bank feed information. We're opening up the balance sheet, changing the dates up top from 010120 to 123120. We're going to go ahead and run that report. Then I'm going to duplicate the tab up top. This is the typical practice. I would start with the routine. We go for every time. And then I'm going to go to the tab to the left. I'm going to go down to the reports at the bottom left. We're going to open up the P and L, the profit and loss, the income statement. There it is in the favorite reports here. We're going to do the same process. We're going to be changing the dates up top. Those dates being the same dates, January through, I'm going to say 12, 31, 20, December, run that report. Then I'm going to uh, copy the report by right clicking on the tab up top or duplicating it. They call it duplicate. I'm going to duplicate the report. And there we have it. Balance sheet, profit and loss. We're going to be entering the data on the left. Let's now go into our bank feed. So we're going to go into the bank feeds on the left screen. And here we are in our bank feeds. This is where we left off. I'm going to close the old hamburger to get it out of the way so it doesn't distract me. And then we're going to go down and we're looking for this bank charge now. This is the last money out type of transaction. Now the bank charge, it could be called once again different things in, in the bank feed. It might list the, uh, the, the bank because this is a charge from the bank. So if you're banking at Chase, it might say Chase or Bank of America or something like that. Uh, the point is, is this is going to be a service charge that you're going to see and you won't, probably won't know about it, of course, until you have the bank statement. They charged you something and we're going to have to enter that into the system. So in, in other words, even if we were using the full service kind of system for this particular charge, like if we were entering the checks into the system, we usually wouldn't know about this until we do the bank reconciliations under this system, right? If I was doing the full service bookkeeping and reconciling without using the bank feeds, the bank service charges are something I wouldn't know about. It wouldn't, I wouldn't see it until I go to the reconciliation process because then I'm comparing the bank statement to our books. Here, of course, we're going to see them in the feeds as we download the feeds. It's typically something that will happen at the end of the time period. So it's a fairly straightforward transaction. Once we're able to recognize it, if we can recognize whatever uh, the, the, the item is they put down here, how, however they describe it, they'll typically do it the same way depending on your institution. So once you recognize that, then you can make a standard type of, of transaction related to it. So I'm going to go to the bank charges. I'm just simply going to open that up. It's going to be an item here. I'm going to say the vendor. Again, it's not really like a vendor, but it's still, uh, it, it's still, you know, you might want to put it under, under a vendor. So it might be called Bank of America uh, or something like that. And you can, you can add the vendor. Now, if there's other kind of items related to the, the Bank of America and the service charges, like if there's some other thing that's in the service charges, like they always call it draws or something like that, then you may you may want to specify the vendor and put that into the vendor. Make a, make a specific vendor related to something that's always in the description. And that way, like if you do something else with Bank of America, like a loan or something like that, it won't pick up the loan as a service charge. So you'd like to be as specific as possible so it picks up, you know, the right amount on it. So I'm going to say, I'm going to call it Bank of America and we'll, and I'm going to call it a vendor. It's not really a vendor, but uh, it's, you know, that's the closest thing we have under here. And I'd like to tra track these transactions by basically who paid us. That's going to be vendor. We'll be able to use those reports. So I'm going to say save. And then we have the category. So now we're looking for the category. It should be an expense. And typically QuickBooks will have an expense of like bank service charges over here. So I'm looking for the expense account of bank service. I'm going to try to type it in there. And they call it bank charges and fees. That's the one we want. And again, it populated by QuickBooks automatically. And notice what it's saying. It's saying it's creating a rule down here. Uh, we'll set the bank charge to bank charges and fees from, from now on. So notice it, it's every time it, it sees that, if it sees bank charge, it's going to apply the automatic rule that they have set up saying it's going to go to bank charges and fees as the expense account. Now, again, we might want to make a more advanced rule just in case I use the customer of Bank of America for some other type of thing, like a loan, like a, like if, if we took a loan out, uh, then the money would be a deposit. Or if there's some other, you know, reason that Bank of America, we might pay Bank of America for something else like checks or some other type of service that we might want to put into something other than uh, bank charges. 
if we were we could then set up basically a custom rule and try to see if we can differentiate between what might be uh, a charge or something else now typically if it's money going out uh, and it's your bank account usually that's going to be pretty routine that's going to be uh, a bank service charge that's going out and even if you buy something like a check it'll usually be in in the bank service charge so i'm going to go ahead and keep this rule uh, for this time and we'll see it should help us to populate in uh, february's transactions because of course we will have bank service charges in february so i'm going to go ahead and save this and then let's just take a look at what happens if we go to the banking or the balance sheet up top close up the hamburger hold down control scroll up just a bit uh, i'm at that one two five percent i'm going to go into the checking account see if we can see what happens obviously all these transactions because they're coming out of the checking account are going to be in the checking account and we're looking for the bank service charge over here we're looking for the amount that went to uh, here it is bank of america and 15 dollars. the other side going to bank service charges if we open that up once again it'll of course be an expense type form so i won't do it we've seen that a few times going back up going back to the balance sheet the other side then going to the pnl profit and loss income statement closing the hamburger on the left scrolling down it's going to be an expense item so it's an expense item down here somewhere there it is there's the 35 opening that up notice we have that in in every month january february and march and it's using the same form so whether we use a full service kind of accounting system or we use uh, kind of a cash based system depending on the bank statement we'll typically be entering this basically as a cash basis system we'll know about it when we get the bank statement we'll take what the bank gave us and we'll enter that directly into the system uh, at that point in time if we're using our service you know full service system that'll probably be at the, be at the bank reconciliation point if we're using uh, bank charges or bank feeds then of course we will see that at some point in the bank feeds typically towards the end of the month going back up top let's see what we have so far so we've entered all of our cash going out type of transactions let's let's change the dates up top from 03 01 uh, 20 to 03 31 20. Run that report. So, this is the month we're looking at. So, we've entered all the cash going out, which is typically reflected if we're on a cash basis on the income statement as expenses. And so, cash goes down. That means, of course, the checking account goes down the other side on the income statement. We haven't entered any of the deposits yet. And therefore, we don't see any increases to, to the checking account for the month of March. And we don't see them reflected on the income statement, which would typically be in the format of income. So we'll do that in future presentations.